Hi friends, I'm Jeffy G. I was right in the middle of creating this new video on the evolution of sampling and sampled instruments when Lander released a new sampler. And that sampler got a lot of attention on the internet. Lots of hype, lots of ideas, lots of opinions. And that distracted me. So I had to make this video on the Lander sampler. And I'm doing this in two phases. I'll give you a quick overview of how it works and where it's unique. But more importantly, I'm going to debunk or question some of the features that people are all excited about. Now, if you've been around sampling for a while, you know that Native Instruments Contact has been the market leader for a long time. Part of that is because there's so many third-party libraries, many of them free that you can download and use with the Contact 8 player. But it's important that you understand there's two modes here. One mode is just playing sampled instruments where you're using presets, but the other is creating sampled instruments based on loops and samples that maybe you've downloaded and you like. The second option has a certain amount of randomness to it that some people are using to inspire them to write songs. The other factor is that most samplers let you slice and chop those samples, modify them, and use them in your own way. You'll find that technique is used extensively in hip hop and EDM. So let's keep that all in perspective as we go through this. I've got Lander Sampler open here in Logic. When you first install Lander Sampler, it's going to prompt you for the location for all your samples. Presumably you've downloaded a bunch of sample packs or you have a bunch of free samples and they're stored somewhere on your hard drive and you're just letting Lander know where is that. Now, if you didn't do that properly at the beginning, you can click on settings, go into settings, and you'll see I've only loaded two locations, my Cymatics library and one called Funky Guitar. If you were to look at my sample library, it's pretty extensive. It's about a terabyte in size, and I've got it all organized by vendor. So there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of samplers, but I wanted to keep it simple for the start. One of the things that has been driving a lot of the hype around Lander Sampler is that when you load samples, it assigns them to every key on your MIDI controller. Okay, here's the assortment I was expecting. Now how these samples are relate to one another is a bit of a mystery to me. I'm not sure how Lander decides which ones to load from which sample packs. So it's the randomness of this sampler that makes it powerful and creative. You get a different assortment of samples from your sample library every time you want to start. Now you can filter these with the advanced filters. You can say, I just want loops. I just want one shots. You can specify loops of a certain length. You could specify just drums, non-drum, tonal, other. And the other thing you could do is just type in a prompt like say bass. And when you go to load those samples, it'll tell you that there's 290 samples found. It's pre-populating the MIDI controller keyboard. And when I go back there, I should just hear bass. And that works. So you've got kind of two modes here. One is you're after some specific sounds, in which case you want to use the advanced features to filter and limit the results. Or you're after something totally random where you can get rid of this, to specify all of any length and even choose the library location that you're after. It's a really good way to just browse through all the samples in your library. And when you find samples you like, you can double click on the key to lock it. And by locking it, that's going to prevent loading any new samples overriding the ones that you like. Of course, you can change the range of a sample that's being played on any key. You can make some modifications here. There are three modes from the main page. One is the one that assigns samples to every key, and the other one is chromatic mode, and the last one is a slice mode. Just select that and go into chromatic mode. We're going to hear that sound at every pitch. And that's typical of a sampler is that you can take a single note, whether it be a loop or one shot, and spread it over the course of the keyboard. For the slice mode, I'm selecting a particular loop. Then I'm going into slice mode by clicking on the little scissors, and it automatically slices this up and assigns it to notes. If that slicing is not 
to your liking, you can change the number of parts that it's sliced up into. Here, this is under equal. This is based on sensitivity. I can reduce the sensitivity for less parts, increase the sensitivity for more. If I don't want to slice up this whole thing, I can limit my slicing to just this area, and I can go back to equal parts. When I choose those equal parts, they're in sync with my DAW, and I can have them in sync by quarter note, eighth note, have fewer slices assigned to fewer notes. Another little trick I learned is that if you hear clicks and pops between your different slices, you can increase the crossfades, and that should eliminate any noise in between playing those different samples. We've been looking at the three modes in the wave window, but if we click to the effects, we'll see that there are six potential effects. Each set of effects is specific to the sample. So if I turn on reverb here, and it's an XY implementation, Depending on where you move this little dot within the XY pad, you're going to get different results. You turn on each one of the effects by clicking on the top button, and you can choose different effects down here at the bottom by cycling through the available choices. Distortion. Find it a little bit heavier. You choose a different type of distortion. Turn off the reverb. Reduce the overall mix. Now, if you want to have effects that apply to all of the samples in your group, you can click on this main effects button, and the effects that you choose, or the effects chain you choose, will apply to everything. There's also a built-in sequencer with five lanes. You can start simple with just the kick lane, and you'll see all you have to do here is pick your notes, pick a sound. You can do that in a couple of different ways. I'm just going to assign this to a note name. Make this nine. Hit play. You're, hearing, you're also hearing what's in lane one, where I've taken a note that was snare-like and just dragged it in. I'll show you how that works. Lane two, find a note I like. That's interesting. Let's put that up here. Don't really know what I'm doing here. Hit play so we can hear what it sounds like. So you've got five lanes to work with, and it defaults to 16 steps, but you can have more than 16 steps. Go in here, you can have up to 64 steps, and the division of the steps is also something you can modify. All around, it's a pretty handy sequencer. I think one of the things that makes this sampler attractive is that it can automatically normalize, adjust the key, the strength, and playback. Uh, if you turn these on, every time you open a sample, it's going to adjust it to the key and stretch it into the correct format that you've chosen. So for example, this is in the key of C. If I change it to the key of D, everything will automatically adjust. In other samplers, this is an effort actually. So it's nice that this does it automatically. If you look under settings, preferences, you can choose whether it automatically normalizes, whether it locks the pitch. Um, and this other feature down here, automatically find the start, uh, which you know some samples have some space at the beginning of them and you want it to start right on the beat. So turning on those settings just automatically does the legwork for you. In line with that thinking, there's something down here called the magic button. And the magic button, when it's turned on, automatically aligns all of your samples to fit into the tempo of your DAW. See up here on the sequencer, by default, if you turn the sync on, it's going to synchronize with the BPMs of your DAW. When you've modified samples, it's a good idea to save it as a preset. You can click on this link at the top, choose whether to overwrite the existing sample or save it as a new one. You can drag any sample directly into your DAW and you can do the same with the sequences. So if you have a pattern that you really like, you can export that pattern. It can export either as audio or as MIDI and then you can use it in your DAW. So after reviewing this, I gotta say, 
It is fairly impressive. Lander has done a really good job of consolidating some of the most modern features in sampling into this new sampler. Did they originate these ideas? Not really. They've kind of taken the best of some of the samplers that are already out there and built them into one. Let's take a look at where some of those ideas came from. Yep, Serato Sampler's been around for about five years. It's very popular with the hip hop community. Its strength has always been in the slicing and dicing and chopping of samples, but it has a lot of these advanced features that you see in the Lander Sampler. It can pre-populate associated samplers, up to 16 of them, and assign them to pads or notes on your MIDI controller. It also has a chromatic mode where you can take one sampler and spread it over the range of your MIDI controller as well. It has similar features to sync or stretch the size of those samples to match the BPM of your DAW. Or you can turn off sync if you want to do something weird. The bottom line here is that some of the features that we take for granted today have been around for about five years. These days, every DAW comes with a pretty capable sampler. In Logic, there's two, Quick Sampler and Full Sampler. I'll just show you one of the capabilities in terms of creating a chromatic instrument. I've got ADSR Sample Manager open. I'm just using that as a library manager to manage all the sample files I have. So here's a one shot of a banjo. If I drag that into the empty space in Logic, I get these options. I can create a quick sampler, original, optimized, drum machine designer, sample academy, or the full sampler. I'm just gonna go with the first. And what it does is it creates a chromatic instrument. Instantly, I've got a multiphonic instrument using that one sample spread across all of the keys of my MIDI controller so I can, I can play a tune where it sounds like a banjo. I can do similar things with a loop. Let's see, acoustic guitar. Okay, and if I drag that in, in this case, it's defaulting to the slice mode and it sliced up this loop, different sections and assigned them to each note on my controller keyboard. And it did that based on the transients. And if that's too sensitive, I have too many, I can reduce the sensitivity. I have less slices or chops. I can choose the starting key on whether it's chromatic or um, just the white keys or just the black keys. Essentially, without doing a full tutorial, everything that you can do in the Lander sampler can be done in the Logic sampler. Uh, it might be slightly easier to use Lander sampler in some cases, but in terms of capabilities, everything is there in my DAW. Today, almost every DAW comes with its own sampler and they're quite capable. The only issue is they're all different and they're all supported in a different way out there in the community. There was a time where Logic kind of led the way with sampling, but a lot of these third-party samplers have gained popularity because they'll run in any DAW. And some of these samplers are very genre-specific. People traditionally have been using samplers to recreate organic or acoustic sounds, but we've gone way beyond that. Now samplers are used to copy synths and non-organic sounds as just a quick way to create something unique. Also, if you look at some of the leading synth tools like say Serum 2 or Pigments, you can now use samples as a sound source. So it's a wildly evolving marketplace. Now I have a Lander subscription and I've got to say there's a lot of good things about it, and there are some other things I'm not too keen on. Some of the plugins they offer are top notch. The only problem is your access to those plugins disappears if you stop paying your subscription. And this is a common complaint with a lot of subscription services. If you stop paying, you no longer have access to all of the tools and loops and everything that came with the subscription. Lander is particularly strong when it comes to the mastering and distribution of your songs. So if that's the platform you're using, no problem might as well take advantage of all the plugins. But if you're considering Lander just to get the Lander sampler, I think you have to evaluate whether it's still worth the money. 
I don't want to sound overly critical here. I try to keep an open mind and I like to deal with facts. I like to try out new plugins, see if they work for me and the type of music that I'm creating. And I think you should do the same. It's good to be skeptical. If you found this video interesting, click on the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, add comments. I always respond to all of the comments. Thanks for watching.